guys. Um, we've got, it's uh, lattes and lifts, or lifts and lattes. We've actually got yeah. some this time. <laughs> Where'd we get them from? Um, oh, what's that? I can't think of what the shop called. Campo. Beans. Beans. Seven, 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 seven beans. Seven beans. Yeah. Yep. Seven beans. There you go. Lattes brought to you by Seven Beans today. <laughs> um, thanks, Daniel, for grabbing them on the way. No worries. Um, so today we're just having a chat with uh, Daniel Kelsey. Um, he's let, there's been some things he's been up to this year that just like really um, amazed me. The idea of running, <laughs> <laughs> you know, 42 k's a week. That's horrific in itself to do it for 42 weeks and then near the end of it to extend that. Um, I just thought I've got to talk to this bloke. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, so I suppose um, the, 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 where, where we should get started is what made it, motivated you to um, begin your fitness journey? Um, probably I've been someone throughout my life. I've always played footy tennis, played tennis fairly heavily when I was younger and then yeah, always played tennis in the summer and then football in the winter and then just sort of floated between those two but was never one that I probably didn't try that hard at pre-season and would go like to do a weight session or gym session for six weeks of a 12 week program and sort of pull out halfway through or say oh this is too hard or the eating, like, the eating structure was too hard or whatever it was, <laughs> I'd just sort of find that a bit difficult, I suppose. So then it'll be like, oh, well, yeah, six weeks is enough. That'll do. I'll be, I'll be right, and get back on the beers with the boys or whatever it was yeah, at the time, yeah. sort of thing. So, um, and then yeah, just with doing the stuff I'm doing at the moment with the um, men's mental health, I just thought by well, setting up a challenge over 42 weeks, then it's something that I have to stick to. So it's, it'll yeah, sort yeah. of give me that structure for 42 weeks and. If I quit, then not only am I letting myself down, it's probably letting a bunch of blokes down as well. Yeah, so, yeah sure. and letting your family down in a way because I've got three little girls. So sort of. Yeah. Well, you've it. really made your, made yourself accountable with that. You've put it out there. Yeah. Um, it's for for a very um, worthy cause, but and, and I guess you know it's such an important cause that like you would feel that you would be really letting them down to, to, to quit, you know? Yeah, hundred um, percent. Yep. So it's a bit like, uh, you know, blackmailing yourself to complete it really. Yeah, pretty you know, nice. um, you've got the weight of the world on your shoulders there to, um, to, and to let that go. Um, and that, that's much what, you know, a lot of people, um, have to do to, to get themselves, yeah, to, to a fitness journey or a health journey too. You know, they, they, they need some way of making themselves accountable. So it's a really good good way of doing it to yourself. I, that, that stuff doesn't work for me. It puts me under too much pressure and I, I like hate it, you know. Yeah. Um, other people thrive on it. Obviously, you, you thrive on that one. Yeah, at, the, at this stage, yeah, it's been really good because like I said, I've yeah, sort of floated in and out and doing gym and footy training probably didn't push as hard as I could have at different pre-seasons when I was younger and middle of my life and that sort of stuff and had a few things happen. Um, lost me dad, what's it, 10 or 11 years ago now. Yeah. And sort of with that, just played footy and then just went out drinking and partying and doing whatever and just went, Yeah. didn't really have a meaning or of what I was doing in life or anything like that. I didn't have a goal to work, work towards and then met my wife and had kids and then sort of thought, oh, yeah, <laughs> start straightening the stuff up a bit now with kids yeah. and sort of by having kids and stuff, that got me in the line in, into a bit of a structure and then from that thought that by doing, yeah, 42 week challenge, then that sets me, sets a structure in place, right, oh, I've got to hit this target this week and then continually hit it yeah. in the first week. Yeah. So, so what brought you to that particular challenge? How did you get, um, like either attracted into that group yeah. or gravitate towards that um, yeah, it was challenge? Yeah, it's probably something that oh, in my era, and it would have been similar in your era, I suppose, growing up that you just had that mentality of, oh, it's, gonna, it's all right. Like if you had a bit of a whinge about something, it was, oh, I shrug it yeah, off, you'll be all right. Suck like, it up and get suck on. Suck it up it. sort yeah. of thing. And then probably through your mid twenties and that, it's sort of started to change a little bit, the focus of mental health and yeah. saying, nah, mate, are you all right? And, and things like that, and then had some issues myself with, which I've never had before, 
mental health sort of issues, but had a bit of anxiety and stuff like that in sort of social circumstances with things that had happened. Yeah. And then from that, had a um, person that I was friends with when I was younger, and as happens over the years, lost touch with, and unfortunately they lost their lives to mental health, and then yeah. that sort of just flicked the switch in my brain. I yeah. already was sort of thinking about doing something, yeah. but then that just flicked the switch to say, nah, look, there's people you know close to home that it's affecting really badly, yeah. so. And then I started looking into the numbers of men's suicide yeah. rate in Australia. So it's, it's 44 a week. Yeah, so it's just been updated, I think, a month or two months ago, yeah. to 44 a week, so. Yeah. So that's why you extended your challenge and yeah, added so some kilometres each week. Yeah, added So I always talk back to football terms, so yeah, you sort of think about that. That's two football teams, so you run yeah. out and play a game of football on a Saturday. Yeah. yeah. All those blokes that you've played against They're aren't there next, next week. week. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. Yeah. Look, sometimes that's one of the best ways to put things, you know, put it into a way that really hits home for certain people. Um, so yeah, like people who play football, to imagine you go and play, you know, two teams play football this week and next week they're not there. Yeah. You know, um, and that would really hit home for them. And for people out there that you think yeah. that actually struggle with it. So. Yeah. So with your anxiety, how did that manifest? Like, you um, know asking. No, that's fine. I just, I had a bit of a falling out with some close people in my life and from that, it just made me... I was still surrounded by those same people and stuff. And when yeah. I entered those environments, I just didn't feel like myself and yeah. started, I didn't know how I was feeling at the start. I didn't know it was anxiety. Yeah. I just yeah. was like, my heart started racing. Yeah. I started getting like sweats and I was like, yeah. hang on, this isn't normal. I've never yeah. had this before. And that, that's what I was getting to because part of the um, thing I'm starting to understand, because I'm probably a little bit behind you, like I, um, in getting my head around the depression and the anxiety inside of things. Um, so I'm, I'm 50 now, so my generation was like even further in that, yeah. you know, stiff upper lip, we don't give a shit, you know, move forward, um, you know, forget about it, move on, yeah. you know, you're weak if you talk about it and all the rest of it. So very hard to sort of deal with it. Um, and the anxiety thing is just understanding it manifests in so many different ways for different people. Yeah. So yeah. Um, some people, it's just, it's just that they feel start off they just don't want to go out, um, and then they start to get scared to go out, and um, yeah. It's, yeah and it's, you might have friends that are like that that, like you say, are scared to go out and stuff, yeah. and you sort of like, oh, something's going on, like yeah. what's been happening, but then you don't understand the full effect of how they're feeling. Yeah. When they go out, and then yeah, like I said, I only started feeling like that, and I was just like, what. What the bloody hell is going on here? Like I've never felt like this before, and um, I've had other people in my family and friends had have anxiety and stuff yeah. before. Never understood it. Just thought, oh, it's probably that old attitude, which I've changed a lot now. But I was like, ah, oh, they'll be right. They're just having a bit of a sook at home. They don't want to come out and have beers with the boys yeah. or whatever yeah. it might be. And oh, or, or some people will just be, oh, I'm tired all the time. Yeah, and that's their way of explaining yeah. their anxiety. And, yeah, the coping um, mechanism. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that, that's something to sort of try and get your head around too, is, is different people feeling deep, like the, the same problem but different symptoms. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I say, like when I've done a few of my videos on Facebook and stuff, most of the stuff I say is just about starting the conversation. And I think by starting that conversation and getting the ball rolling, then someone might say, yeah, I've got a few anxiety, social anxiety issues yeah. or... I've got anxiety when I go out into public places. So then the more you get to know that person, you go, if you're in a group environment, someone might say, oh, I'm not coming out tonight. For instance, like you said, you're tired. Yeah. Or someone might say they're tired. Yeah. And then the boys or whoever in the group start bagging them out, but you might go, oh, oh hang on. There's a bit more to the story. And yeah. 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 So this, yeah. This, do you, do you think, feel that this, um, so what, what week are we up to now? So I'm at week 45 now. So 45? In, yeah. <laughs> so initially it was 42K yeah. for 42 weeks because obviously at that stage there was 42 men that committed suicide. Yeah. Stats got updated, so I thought, well, I've got to update me run to 44 in 44 weeks. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, just was sort of looking for a date, a good finish date, something sort of significant to finish on. Yeah. And then found in two weeks' time on the 19th, I think it is on the Friday, next Friday is International Men's Health Day. 
Yeah. So I thought, well, I've done 44 weeks, may as well do another two and, <laughs> and then just sort of finish on a significant day, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Um, and how can, how can um, we all help with that? Um, you can just go to my Facebook page um, and there's a GoFundMe link if you go through some of my videos. Yeah. Um, a few people would know about the Blokes United page on Facebook. Yeah. Um, I've got heaps of videos on there and there's a link. And you can even just go onto Google, type in GoFundMe yeah. and then write 42Ks in 42 weeks. In the... um, we'll get it done. So um, this has been your most consistent training you've done. Yeah, so, yeah, by far, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, like I said at the start, yeah, it sort of did go into a twelve week challenge, like you see, like yeah, your, um, what's that, like your muscle challenges or yeah. whatever they're called, and um, yeah, get eight weeks in and like going pretty well here, looking good, and then it might be a thirtieth comes up or a twenty first, and you go to one and you don't drink, and you're like, oh yeah, and then the next week end up just going out and having a blowout, and you're like, oh well, yeah. I've had a blowout this week, so I'll just go sort of fall back into that same environment, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, by doing this, it, yeah, it just yeah, makes you... you really made yourself accountable <laughs> yeah, to the world, really. Yeah. That's how it, how it would feel yeah. um, uh, to me to put put something out probably that's got so, so, much, so much significance to so many people to put it out there and then feel that you're going to let all those people down would just be very... Um, very hard for you to sort of take the foot off. Yeah, and that's what I thought. That was sort of the thought process behind it. Doing it as well through that the Blokes United page on Facebook. I think there's about twenty four thousand members yeah. on that, and I was yeah posted heap of videos on that first before I did it, and then said yeah. I was doing the challenge. So I was like, and then after my first two weeks, I would have had say ten thousand comments of people saying yeah. good job and stuff like that, and I'm thinking, geez, if I can't stop because if I'm going to let all these blokes <laughs> down, then yeah. get people and family talking about it, and you're like yeah, I can't yeah. let anyone down here. I've got to oh. keep on track. So what do you think the most rewarding part of this has been? Probably getting um, into sort of, I want to call it like a system of how I do everything and yeah. like just getting in a good routine, routine I suppose routine. is the word of like, you have, I have my weeks where I'm yeah, being a bit sore and whatever else, but just getting that routine of, right, I'm getting up in the morning, yeah. going for a run. And then I've said to a few people, we, Waking up at five o'clock in the morning or something like that's hard. But if you wake up and then go and do your 10K run, then that's the hardest thing you're going to do for the day. So the rest of the day is easy. Yeah. So that's probably one of the biggest yeah. things I've found is just having that routine and then seeing um, yeah, massive positive things yeah. and with my body from yeah. that. And yeah, just having that nice routine to flow into. And yeah, you'd say routine would be king, really. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. And you hear from it for sure. So what have you found the most challenging moments along the way? Uh, probably right in the middle, because I wasn't a big one. I think I've spoke to you about it. Um, not for warming up and stretching and yeah. doing a warm down and stuff mm. like that. So my body started really feeling it about halfway through, because yeah. um, probably the first, oh, close to half of it, I was doing footy training as well and playing footy on a Saturday. Yeah, I remember talking to you. So yeah. I'd do me 42Ks, yeah, me 42Ks by Friday night, sort of, or Friday Arvo, have yeah. your rest and play footy Saturday. Yeah. And then Sunday was a rest day and then, yeah, get back into it Monday. But I really, that Monday was really hard, like just to get out of bed and know that you've got to bang out a big run. And yeah. just my body, was, everything was just sort of just banged up and sore. Rest. and yeah. And then probably from that, I... I felt like I mean, miss, my wife's been really good with pushing yeah. me and making sure yeah. I keep a positive attitude with it but then found that I was sort of snapping at her and getting yeah. angry like oh but I'm too sore and she's like yeah but you've got to go through yeah. so that sort of just had that dip a bit in mindset I suppose for a little bit yeah. for a flat patch and yeah, it was middle of winter it was cold and yeah. windy and raining <laughs> and <laughs> how did you think you got over that? Just got literally just went back to saying Right, this is my routine on a Monday was run anywhere from 12 to 15 Ks to bang yeah. out a big run for the start of the week. So just made sure I tick that box on a Monday, Tuesday go do another 5 to 10 Ks and then just got back in that routine of yeah. getting me Ks done by Friday and yeah, that sort of set me up and put me back on a good path and spoke to a lot of people on Facebook as well and just thought, yeah, I was in a bit of a lull and that helped yeah. as well, just yeah, having a bit of a chat. And, 
chin wag about it all. Um, so how do you feel compared to when you first start, the first day you started? Oh, massive, yeah, massively different. Just so much fitter and that. I've still got me, like me physique. That probably doesn't show it, I suppose. I've, like I've lost a fair bit of weight, and I've still got the old, just that bottom yeah. belly fat and but, stuff like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, physically, it's, physically, it's the fittest I've ever been in my life. Like yeah. by an absolute country mile. Like yeah, and I'm 30, just not long turned 34, and yeah. yeah, to say that I'm the fittest I've ever been. Is, yeah. yeah, it's pretty good. It's it definitely covered some ground today. Yeah, buddy. Um, right. <laughs> so I think we'll we'll wrap it up there. But um, so generally, you know, Daniel's done some awesome work for uh, men's mental health, and as see, you know, um, there, there's a, a lot of depth in there. Yeah, <laughs> so it was really good actually. I enjoyed that, and it's just like you said, it's just a yeah, it's a good chat, and then just to open up a bit about different things and just talk about mental health and yeah. like I said that's it's slowly changing that perspective and yeah. we can talk about it more which is a good thing um, sometimes unfortunately people use it in the wrong way I think we spoke about it a bit the other day yeah, but, yeah, but but you want to put the focus on the people in the right way and yeah that's it yeah um, we can all get in that negative headspace where you kind of see someone using mental health as an excuse but yep. you know it's a genuine concern for a lot of people though yeah 100 um, percent. and especially the times we're in at the moment with yeah wouldn't thought we'd still be here two years or 18 months or two years yeah, down the track but crazy, isn't it? yeah um, so, but that's another topic in itself <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. all right um so lifts and lattes episode two um check out the information to help daniel with his um course and see um there's a group that you were talking about. So we'll, um, what was that group? Uh, Blokes United on Facebook. It's just an open men's forum to jump on and have a chat. Any bloke can jump on there. And yeah, it's just for blokes to just have a conversation and interact with each other, really. Cool. Um, so we'll put up links for those. And um, yeah, I'll well, look, look forward to talking to you for uh, episode three of Lips and Lattes. We'll see if we can get two, two lots of lattes in a row. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great one. Thanks, guys.